different hobbies attract different types of people. Some of the communities built around pastimes can be categorized or stereotyped as all sorts of different things. And let me tell you right now, it's absolutely fair to label birders and bird watchers as crazy people. The term crazy can have a lot of different meanings, and I'm not talking about the mentally unstable kind of crazy, but rather the kind of crazy more in line with fanatical passion that other people not involved in the hobby may mistake as mental instability. Before you get too upset about this declaration, I know a thing or two about the craziness of birders, because I in fact am a birder and am also a self-admitted crazy person. This will not be a video chastising birders and bird watchers, but rather a celebration of all the weird and wacky things that birding can drive you to do. Here are five reasons birders and bird watchers are absolute crazy people. They wake up early. If you're anything like me, you aren't a big fan of getting up early, and few things can persuade you to do so voluntarily. One of those things is birding. While most birds are active throughout most of the day, the early part of the morning is when they are most energetic and vocal. This often means maximizing your day will require getting up before sunrise to make sure you arrive at your destination in time to catch the bird songs ringing in the first light. Furthermore, sometimes the day starts even earlier than near sunrise if your destination is farther away. More on that in just a minute. The fact of the matter is that to get the most out of birding, a lot of times it will mean waking up extremely early, which people usually only do voluntarily when they are extremely passionate about something, or dare I say, crazy about something. They take long trips. Another wild thing that hardcore birders routinely do is travel great distances in the pursuit of birds. This can be going to a particular hotspot or on a journey to see a particular bird that happens to be far away. This is especially the case for rarities both locally and even on the national level. One of the longest trips I ever went on to see a bird was driving from eastern Wisconsin to Iowa to try and find an extremely rare tundra bean goose. It's not just driving long distances though that make birders a bit crazy. It's that they also take planes just to see rare birds. A stellar sea eagle on the east coast and a small billed Delania in Illinois are just two examples of birds that people took flights from across the country just for the sake of checking off their list. For rare birds, it's not uncommon at all for people to travel exceptional distances, and I think that's pretty crazy. But admittedly, a long road trip to see a bird makes for a great time, especially when you find the one you're looking for. They go on birding vacations. In the same vein as road trips and flights to see birds are what we at Badgerland Birding call birdcations. These are vacations specifically for the purpose of going birding. This is actually way more common than you might think, as certain regions of the United States and different countries across the world are major meccas for ecotourism. One such area in the United States is the Rio Grande Valley, where birders flock from all over the country to explore the area and view some of the many rare birds that call South Texas home. Other hotspots for birders to vacation to are Arizona, Costa Rica, and Colombia. You have to be pretty passionate about a hobby to center your entire vacation around it, and that's exactly what many birders do. They go to weird places. Undoubtedly one of the most peculiar things about birders is the places that they're willing to go to find birds. Of course, some of these places are beautiful and picturesque. Others, however, are, well, let's just say, not so majestic. Some of the most hilarious places birders routinely find themselves going are landfills. Landfills can be absolute gold mines for different scavenging species, such as gulls and birds of prey, but telling people you're spending the day at the dump will definitely get you some weird looks. Other odd places birders go looking for birds are flooded fields, roadsides, sod farms, and even other people's houses for rarities that show up at home bird feeders. To non-birders, going to these places is a very weird thing, but in my opinion, the strange places birding takes you is actually one of the most enjoyable things about it. What other reason would you possibly have to go to a sod farm or a landfill? The strangeness of it is what makes it fun. They do whatever it takes to find birds. Probably the most crazy thing about birders and bird watchers is the way they do whatever it takes to find the bird they're looking for. 
While this is a broad statement, I can think of several examples of birders doing things normal humans would consider to be too much for the sake of seeing a bird. This can range from going into difficult terrain such as steep grades, to having to hike for miles on trails. One particular instance I remember in which I did something a little crazy to see a bird was when I walked through fields filled with weedy plants to find a Nelson Sparrow. Was it worth it? Absolutely it was. Another way in which birders do whatever it takes to find birds is braving the weather. Not only is it rain and snow that birders are often willing to go out in, but also bitter cold and sweltering heat. We have experienced both ends of the spectrum. I distinctly remember the sub-zero temperatures of the Saxon bog in Minnesota as we searched for great gray owls and other boreal birds. In spite of the cold, that was an awesome trip, and it really goes to show that birders will brave some awful weather and venture into some wild places to find birds. In all, birders really do some crazy things. From the early mornings to the long trips, it's actually an extremely adventurous hobby, and the most out there things about it are also what make it the most fun. Of course, not all birders and bird watchers are hardcore enough to do these types of things, but as a whole, to get the most out of birding, I think you have to be at least a little bit crazy. Are there other crazy things birders do that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.